Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. We continue our tour of what may matter by talking about dancers and load cells. In the left corner, we have the veteran fighter with some killer moves. In the right corner, we have the challenger with some new moves. One of the longest standing debates is whether dancers are better than load cells or vice versa. There are many problems with this simplistic question and the simplistic answer that follows. Let me begin by suggesting that the question is posed completely wrong. Better is an idealism without guarantee of payback for the effort. Better may not be good enough. Instead, let me suggest that what we need is just that, good enough, which I will define shortly. Either may be good enough, neither may be good enough, one might be while the other may not, and the answer may be different for different situations. The short answer is that both might work good enough if. The word if in all caps is an abbreviation for if and only if. The if is the fine print as they say. The fine print is if the mechanical and electrical engineers know what they're doing. Otherwise, you would be hoping that the designers were lucky enough to copy a design that was lucky enough to work for you. Now, as well as for as long as you own the machine. However, rather than relying on luck, I would suggest that, one, that your builder has been to web school, such as taught by myself or others. Two, that your builder has been to drive school, that at present is only taught by Clarence Claussen. Three, that you protect yourself by writing into the purchasing contract a performance clause related to allowable tension variability as detailed in my web machine buying guide and elsewhere. Rather than dive into the techie discussion comparing these two methods for tension control, let me just distill the discussion into some major areas of concern. With the dancer, we should be concerned with the entirely avoidable yet epidemic lack of calibration. We discussed this in a previous Web 201 clip. We should also be quite concerned about the epidemic of excessive friction in mechanical designs. Lastly, we should be concerned with the epidemic sloppy program that is allowed with dancers. With the load cell, we need to be careful that the components are mechanically overload protected and shielded from environmental insults such as heat and water and impacts. Electrical concerns include having onboard amplifiers so as not to put out wimpy signals across wires that might be subject to electrical noise. System resonance is also possible at moderate speeds and guaranteed at higher speeds, and this presents both mechanical and electrical challenges. Finally, the load cell requires a much higher level of programming prowess than the dancer does. Sloppy here will simply not work at all. Finally, there is a techie discussion of the dancer's ability to absorb high-frequency content upsets that can be useful and even vital for things like the flying splice unwinds and turret winder transfers. Yet at lower frequency, the dancer exacerbates tension upset. We could also get into a discussion of inertia and inertia compensated designs. Yet I think it would be time to end this by saying that the devil is truly in the details. Details that can only be learned by a combination of literally going to school and working with scores or hundreds of systems. Thank you so very much for watching this module and my plant practical video clips. Stay tuned as we continue our tour of what matters in web handling.